Hey everyone, I'm Scott Stokely and this is the first Disc Golf Business Spotlight, hopefully of many. And I am in Savannah, Georgia. I'm here for the Savannah Open with Valerie Williams of Wicked Aces Disc Golf and also Specialty Sports. Yep. And I want to talk to you about your foray into the disc golf business. But first, just real quick, tell me about you and disc golf. Um, so I started disc golf promoting about six years ago. Um, I started playing about five and a half years ago because the local club, the Savannah Disc Golf Association, um, they came and asked me to vend a tournament and I never did it before. I think I had about, I don't know, maybe like a hundred discs and I went out there and they asked me all kinds of questions and I was like, oh my god, I don't know this. but. Um, from that point forward, I was like, I'm going to know this because it looks pretty cool and everybody looks like they're having fun and they're really close. And after that, I was pretty hooked. All right. And you play. I do. And we first met. Did we meet, meet when I came here a few years ago? Um, no, we actually okay. met last year uh, via social media. All right. So we met online. And this is a quick aside to the disc golf business, but we have to mention this. You had signed up for a video private lesson, mm -hmm. and something happened that made us have to delay the lesson for a few months. What happened? So, in April of last year, I was bitten by a copperhead, um, and I had to have two surgeries last year. And um, it wasn't my throwing hand, but it pretty much threw my whole game off. I kind of had to relearn how to throw, um, relearn how to move my body again in the direction um, without thinking about everything that was going on because it actually, um, my nerves are damaged, so it affected everything from here um, down, and I don't have any feeling in the left side of my hand. And... Um, I had another surgery, so that's kind of why we got delayed, and uh, it, was, it was a process. And that happened on a course? That happened on the disc golf course. Um, I went to go throw my disc, and it hit a branch and fell into a small patch of grass. And when I went to look over, I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was tall to where it was kind of sketchy, but it was just like enough to where your disc is kind of compact in the ground. And I didn't even get my hand halfway down, and he came up from underneath the disc and bit me on the finger. Did it, like, did he hang on? Did you pick him up and, like, or did it just, like, bite and... No, he, he bit, and then he retracted, and then he kind of coiled up on top of my disc, and it took me a second to realize, like, what just happened, and then I was like, oh, I just got bit by a snake. Okay, because... I didn't, it's like I didn't see him at first, it was just so quick, it's weird, it's hard to describe, like, I knew, I didn't see him immediately, but then I knew that I had gotten bit by a snake, and then I looked down and saw him, like, coil up, and that was probably, that's the, probably the worst pain I've ever felt in my entire life. Okay, I'm going to ask you the most insensitive thing you've ever been asked, but if I don't, it'll be the first comment did you get your disc back? Um, actually, I did get the disc. <laughs> I got it back. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I, people want to know. <laughs> I got it back and I actually had somebody dye it for me because I was like, I'm never going to throw this again. Um, it was a Fury. And it was one of my favorite Furies. And I was so sad that I was just like, I can't throw this again. It was The disc, the disc itself was traumatic. Mm. And so now it's on my wall. Okay. <laughs> So that's awful, but a lot of awful things lead to the best story. So at least you got a story that you can tell the grandkids. Yeah, I mean, I feel like um, I'm alive because um, that could have turned out pretty bad um, from the from the area that he bit me. He bit me directly on the tendon, tendon, and straight into um, the venom went pretty far. Like it. It caused some issues. It caused my skin to swell up all the way up my arm. So, I mean, that could have turned into a whole different situation. I could have lost my hand. I could have lost my arm. Um, 
and also it's led to people being more safer on the course because this is Savannah, there's snakes everywhere um, at every single course. Um, it's inevitable in the summertime. So it has people, because I can tell you last year I saw rattlesnakes, I saw copperheads, I was taking pictures of them, didn't think twice about where I went to go pick up my disc or anything like that. So now I hear a lot of people actually all over the country reach out and they're just like, I heard your story and you know now we're we're all more safe on the course and you know yeah I hope I hope it helps <laughs> I yeah I I I I don't want to say I understand but I don't that would be that'd be nonsense so it's a drag but at least you're being positive that's cool oh yeah all right so now let's talk disc golf business <laughs> so tell me about Wicked Aces so I started Wicked Aces in 2019 um, in June and it was just something that I wanted to take a little bit further from what I'm already doing and get more out into the community and um, it's blossomed. It's become it's become like an extra extension of what I'm already doing and I get out more in the community with everything. Um, I have a team across the country of 65 people um, and they all um, they're running events, they're, uh, you know, doing some fundraising in their own areas. Um, we're just out there having a blast and we, we have fun, we play for tags, it's friendly competition, and yeah. And so when you say they're around the country doing this, that they're on the team? Mm hmm And they are running Wicked Aces events, does that tie into the website for prizes or how, like how's the tie-in? It does. They do, um, they give away gift cards, they do their own giveaways of shirts and swags and accessories and everything. Um, you can find them all over social media. They're also, um, we use Wicked Aces for them to promote their own logos on the website and all the profits go to the players. Um, and that's kind of my main thing for the team. It's to just kind of grow them. And if anybody knows me, I am... I won't, I don't know, I just feel so passionate about helping other people, so it's like I'm always asking them what are their goals, um, I know that I'm all over social media, I know everybody sees me all the time, and I'm always talking, and I'm always promoting people, so it's kind of like that's, that was the purpose of my team, to help others grow, to get the word out about growing the sport. Um, if you act like if you're around me, everybody knows that that's that's all I try to do. I try to put disc golf in everybody's faces all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I want you to set aside the altruism for a few minutes because I okay. want I, this is about promoting you. Okay. And then as soon as we're done, you can go back to promoting everybody <laughs> else and helping them pay for entry fees and all this cool stuff. So the website is it's uh, wickedacesdg.com. WickedAcesDG.com. We'll, we'll include a link, of course. And what do you sell on the website? So we have custom clothing um, and accessories. People actually can go on there and design their own gear with different colors and different logos. They can add um, anything that they want on there. So we have bogey bags, hats, um, baby clothes, doll clothes. Um, <laughs> it's really cute. We've got. <laughs> um, this dog hoodie, and it's, it's, I don't know, I'm just, I'm a puppy lover, so that was my thing. Um, but we also have, like, the Wicked Aces Run series, and that shows different aces from all over the country, um, which is really cool, because people have started tagging us now, so now I can start throwing them on the website and just showcasing a bunch of people, um, every week. So we also have, uh, the Support the Team and the team has their own logo. So if you see that tab on there, click on there because all those profits go to the players. Um, that's something that I, I feel really strongly about. And um, I don't know, I think it's a really cool website, so I think people should visit it and check it out. Okay, so you're doing all these things to send the money back to the players, but you're making some money too, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I, I always tell people this, is that you can be as generous as you want, but it's not sustainable if you're not doing like if you're not taking care of yourself also, you gotta take care of you too. So I'm glad right. you are doing that as well. Yes. How many states do you have people running events? Or that are on the team or participating? Um, we're probably in over 10 states. 
Are they mostly in the southeast? They're mostly in the southeast because when I started this, um, it was mainly kind of like the people that supported me in this area um, that was mainly like, yeah, Val, you know, I'll support you if you start a company. And because, you know, at first I was like, oh, God, like, what if I fail? What if I, you know, and everyone was like, no, it's fine. We got you. And uh, so, and I travel a lot around South Carolina and Georgia um, vending tournaments. So that's okay. kind of where my network has been. Um, and so when I started Wicked Aces, that's kind of, this is, this is kind of the area that it was pertained to. Um, nobody knew who I was up north or out west or, you know, midwest or anything like that. So um, I grew it really big here first, and then now people are starting to hear about me. And, of course, I want to reach all those people in those remote corners like Montana. And I think somebody <laughs> sent me a message once, and they were like, can you send me some stickers? Nobody knows who you are out here. And I was like, yeah, actually, I will. So, That's great. Um, you know, now people are reaching out, so... But the southeast is kind of, you know, I'm from Charleston, um, grew up in Savannah, my family's from Savannah, this is kind of like my home base, but I go back and forth a lot, so I love the southeast. All right. You have a podcast. I do. What is the podcast? What is the podcast about? So Where the, can they find it? <laughs> you can find it on Spotify and Google Podcasts. Um, it's called the Wicked Aces DG Podcast, and I talk about different topics every week from ratings to... Uh, traveling on the road for disc golf and just fun things. I may talk about an upcoming tournament going on. Um, I interview guests. Uh, we have it, the podcast runs every two weeks um, and it's posted every Monday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, we just have a lot of fun. I just talk to people and get different opinions on things. Last week I did the AMs after they came off the course. So I talked to them about their round and what mm -hmm. disc they threw. Um, I got to talk to the TD. So that was the first time I kind of did live on location and it worked out really well. So I'm learning and it's great. Mm -hmm. And it's been fun to do it. It's something that I stepped out of my comfort zone to do because I don't feel like I have a radio voice at all. But I just get on there, I laugh, I act goofy, I sit there with my dog, and I just record. And I just think that's the most realest thing that you could do. And that's kind of what a podcast is. It's just talking, it's being real. And I've learned a lot of things about myself. I learned about a lot of things just researching uh, different disc golf topics, talking to people across the country. That's a really cool thing. Where did the name Wicked Aces come from? And please tell me it's because the word <laughs> wicked used to be cool back in my day. I don't know. I'm always, so I'm the weirdest person on the planet. I just say all kinds of stuff, and I'm just like, you know, in, in the weirdest times, I'm like, man, that was wicked. Wicked. And I was like, i got to tie Wicked Aces into something. And I actually sat with a notepad, and I was just drawing around it, and, you know, I don't know. I drew a card, and then I was like, Ace, Ace. I never had one, but it sounds right. Wicked Aces. Wicked Aces disc golf. And then it came. And then it worked. So. I love that because Wicked was a fantastic word for about three months, right between Nectar and Hella. But like, it, <laughs> but it, for a moment in history, for a moment in history, that was like, Wicked was the word. Kids these days, they don't. I said hello a lot. <laughs> yeah, hello, yeah, and yeah. I'm going to guess for about three and a half months, maybe three and three quarter months, hella. Yeah. That's about right. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's about how long hella lasted. What is the future of Wicked Aces? Um, I'm looking to travel a whole lot more. That's, that's one of the things I want to get out and meet people. Um, I definitely want to become a staple name in the disc golf community. Um, I'm working very hard on that. I'm working to, you know, just establish as an actual, you know, like a, I won't say major company, it doesn't have to be, but you know, like a big company. Like just a well-known name that, and especially the fact that it's female owned and operated. Mm -hmm. I'm very, you know, big on women's disc golf and um, you know, I just think that more women that own companies should 
have their name up there. Did you hear that? That's a great lesson. I mean, you are a pioneer. And women are they're making their place as players, but they aren't representing yes in, com in companies yet the way they what they're going to be. It's like six to four in college right now, it's women to men, so <laughs> we're gonna, us men are going to lose our spots here at some point. But, but yeah, but more women need to step up and run companies and make a business out of it. Why not? I think so, because I think we do a really great job. Um, you know, you have mine, you have Ladies First, you have Stupid Tree Disc Golf, um, you have Ashley Pyroheiser. I mean, there's, there's a big network of women that um, I've connected with, and it's kind of like, you know, we want to do everything we can to grow women's, bis or women's disc golf, because it's not huge in a lot of areas. Um, and if you have more research resources, like, you know, in my area, I do everything that I can. When I started TDing, um, and I, my first tournament was last year, and, you know, we had 14 women come from all over the country. Our, our max is like three here on a consistent basis. And I provided throw pink items, um, you know, women's gift baskets, uh, things that had lip gloss and lotion in it. Some things for us instead of just getting, you know, a disc and a mini. You know, it's just we got to make more resources for women. And that's another thing that I want to do because I'm real big into the Respect Your Game campaign and just advocating for women's disc golf. That's awesome. Anything else? Oh, I think I'm good. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. This is great. We're going to be doing more of these because this is really, really, really fun. I can't wait. So thank you so much for being the first Disc Golf Business Spotlight. I appreciate many, it. Many more to come. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, everyone. I'm now on Patreon. Click the link below. Not only keep the free content coming with tutorials, tips, podcasts, etc., but get a bunch of free stuff like live stream Q&As, copy of my book, voting on topics, behind the scenes, bunch of cool stuff. Click the link down below to join.